Welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and I want to introduce what the Earth Similarity Index is in this particular video. And you've got the equation there which looks kind of complex but I'm going to explain what it is and why we might use it. Okay. Now the first thing that's probably worth noting that you're probably aware of as well is Earth is the only place or only planet or location that we know that has life. There are some interesting hints on other planets, things like that, maybe even some moons around other planets that might suggest there is life there, but there's nothing definitive about it yet. So Mars has some interesting things going off. There's some exoplanets that James Webb has been looking at that has some interesting things going off. But for now, the only place we really know that definitively has life is Earth. We know that for sure. Now, Earth-like planets are particularly rare. So we're talking about terrestrial planets that are around the same size, the same sort of temperature, the same sort of composition. They're quite rare. We have lots of very big planets, gas giants, quite hot planets, but Earth-like terrestrial planets are very rare. And if you then split that out into different sorts of Earth-like planets, then ones with land-ocean mixes like Earth are even rarer. They make up like 1% of those. The vast majority are land planets that don't have those big oceans. They could be like lava worlds or dry planets. Maybe they're too hot, they just don't have the liquid water on. But there's actually more ocean planets than there are ones like Earth as well. So Earth-like planets, exactly like ours, extremely rare. So this is a fairly complex looking plot of well, I suppose habitable planets. So what you've got here on the y-axis, you've got stellar temperature. So that's the temperature of the star. The hotter they are, obviously, the higher up they are. You then also got the actual stellar flux. That's the amount of starlight that makes it to the planet. Now, a stellar flux of one means it's getting the same amount of energy to the surface of the planet that Earth gets. So it's normalized to Earth. So stellar flux of one, that's pretty much what Earth is. Now, you can then look at the actual sizes of those circles, which gives you the size of the planet. Now, the absolute vast majority of those are very big planets, as I mentioned. We've discovered a lot of big planets. Part of that reason is big planets are easy to detect. Small ones, not so much. And this is planets that could potentially be habitable. And if you look really carefully, there's not many Earth-like planets that are getting the same sort of stellar flux or energy to their surface as Earth does. So very, very rare to have Earth-like planets in the habitable zone. So the Earth Similarity Index is a way of kind of assessing how closely an exoplanet might resemble Earth given some key parameters. So what we can do is we can calculate and measure certain things of these planets. We can use those to then determine how similar they are to Earth. It doesn't necessarily mean that they, they ha they're habitable or that they have life, but it's a way of kind of just assessing it and giving kind of a, a good approximation as to maybe which are the best ones to then study more, I suppose. So some of those key parameters we can use could be radius, density, escape velocity, surface temperature, solar flux, atmospheric composition. We can also use things like the mass. So we've got the radius, the density, there are some extra ones we can use and we can't always measure all of those so it might be that we just use one or two there's a simplified version where you can just use the radius and the stellar flux to then get a an esi or an earth similarity index value but you can use kind of all these sort of parameters here so what does this equation look like and yeah there's a few things going off here but the ESI, the Earth Similarity Index, is given by this here. Now, you have lots of parameters in there. You have kind of like some reference points and things like that. So we're going to go back to this and explain what those variables are. But what you typically get is you're going to get a value probably between 0 and 1. The closer to 1 that you get for your ESI, the more similarities that planet shares with Earth. If it was one, then it's pretty much Earth. So, for example, I've got Jupiter and I've got Proxima Centauri B here. Now, Jupiter is not really Earth-like. So, you, we would expect an ESI considerably smaller 
than one for a gas giant. But Proxima Centauri B actually has a, a value pretty close to one. So pretty close, 0.87. That's a fairly similar. That's actually our nearest exoplanet. And it shares a lot of similarities with Earth. So our nearest exoplanet is fairly similar to Earth. That's quite exciting, actually. So let's go back to this equation. How do we calculate it? Well, the N we have there is the number of properties that you're going to consider. So let's say you just do radius and stellar flux, then N is going to be 2. If you want to add in mass or something else, that would be 3. You've then got your Xi. That's going to be your property of your exoplanet. So we've got the number of properties being considered. We've then got Xi, where I would be the property being um, considered at that point. You've then got the, your other value on the other side, the Xi0. That's going to be some terrestrial reference value. So we use a reference value there that our exoplanet is being compared to. And then we have this other weighting exponent because some of those key parameters are actually going to have more importance, I suppose. They're going to be more important to calculate our similarity. Maybe it's the temperature. Maybe the temperature is more important for habitability than its size. So we might apply a higher weighting to that particular parameter. Now, this is a list of Earth similarity indexes calculated for a variety of planets that are kind of Earth-like. Now, I've pulled out the top one, Proxima Centauri B, which I mentioned before, because it's our nearest one. It's also one of the best candidates. Not necessarily the best one. There are other ones which kind of get closer to one. This is just a sample anyway. And you can also go and calculate your own if you really want to. But it's our nearest one, and it's a pretty good candidate. We could potentially go there with the technology we have, we can go and investigate that. It takes a long time, it's like four light years away or so, but still, it's not out of reach. But also note, you've got TRAPPIST-1. There's three planets on that list from TRAPPIST-1. That's quite interesting. That might be a system we go and investigate in a bit more detail because there's three planets there that crop up on this list that are not as similar as Proxima Centauri B, but they are similar enough to be interesting to really investigate and in a single system as well so just to give you a bit of context for proxima centauri b because i do like this as an exoplanet we've got the sun there and it's just over four light years away it orbits proxima centauri which is also part of the alpha centauri system so actually a triple star system it's only four, four light years away closest exoplanet you know let's go there in the future it's earth-like potentially could be very exciting to see that Anyway, if you enjoy these videos, you find them helpful or interesting, then do consider becoming a member. It obviously helps support the channel in general and help make these videos, but also you get some extra benefits. There's some videos in the member section. And yeah, just thank you for watching.